Hi, thanks for joining another video today. Today we'll be talking about range anxiety. Range anxiety is the fear that you're not going to be able to make it to your destination because you ran out of charge. After all, it's not like someone can bring you to the nearest charger and fill up a can with some electricity. I had range anxiety when I first drove my EV, as most people do, but after I got comfortable and learned more about my car and charging networks, that soon disappeared. Charging networks continue to grow as EV sales climb. Though they are expanding, it is not a perfect system yet. There are still many areas that lack fast chargers. Tesla has a good number of superchargers stationed for their cars, and there are several fast charging companies set up for traveling EVs such as Electrify America, EVgo, and ChargePoint. Let me pull up a map on PlugShare with charger stations using CCS, Chatamo, and Tesla superchargers. As you can see, there are options, so depending on your vehicle's range, you can plan accordingly and not worry about being stuck in the middle of a highway. To tackle this topic, we're going to make a trip with two different routes. I'm driving my Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus that has an EPA range of 240 miles. I'm going to route this trip as if I were driving two different cars. I don't have another EV accessible to me right now, so let's improvise. Let me explain. My first route is from Phoenix to Nevada. This tells me I need to take this path and stop at these chargers. On the way back, I'm going to route my trip as though I was driving a Polestar 2, which has a similar range of 233 miles. On the way back, I will have to take a different path to reach my destination. A better route planner recommends stopping in Needles, California than stopping in Buckeye, Arizona. We'd arrive at Buckeye with 10% range. I'm going to propose that we make an extra stop in Quartzsite so we don't arrive with too low of a range. There you go, as quickly as that, I pre-planned a route to account for my range. Let's start the trip in the Tesla going to Nevada. After the trip, we can talk about tips in reducing range anxiety and maximizing your range. Okay, let's go. I'm starting my trip with 78% charge and it looks like the cars directed me to stop in Wickenburg and Kingman. I should be arriving in Henderson with about 19% charge. I arrived at my first charging spot and I arrived at 46%. Okay, I'm done charging, I'm going to unplug and I'll be leaving at 90% and my next stop will be in Kingman. So let's go. I am now in Kingman, Arizona at the superchargers and I have ride with 13% battery and I'm going to plug in. I'm about to unplug and I'm going to leave at 72% and then I'll just arrive to my destination after this. And um, sorry everything is recorded at night, I did leave my house um, kind of late. So see you at, uh, at my destination. Just like magic, I've arrived at my final destination with 15% battery and that total trip was around 294 miles. So I'm going to go to bed and I'll see you guys on the return trip. All right, it's time to go back home and it's daylight. So from my destination, here is one of the options you can charge with if I had my Upholstar too, which I obviously don't, but it's pretend. And this is an EVgo and you would be charging here. So I will charge around um, up to 80% before I go to my next destination. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm taking a different route back to Phoenix to find more opportunity to charge with CCS. According to this app that I'm using, if I were to leave with the 80% charge, I would arrive at my next destination at Needles with 42% battery. So I didn't need to charge up to 80%, but I still did. I'm 
I'm in Needles, California, and behind me here are the Electrify America chargers with CCS and Chatamo adapter. And also here to the side are Clipper Creek J connectors, which you can charge with too. And according to the app, if we were charging the Polestar 2, we would charge here for about 48 minutes up to 98% charge. And then from here, we can head on straight to Phoenix without any stops and we would arrive with 10% battery. But I do want to make another stop in Blythe, California, just to stop and check out those chargers. And then maybe I would like charge 10%, 20% more before I go back to Phoenix, um, just because that's what I would do. So let's go to the next stop. I'm here in Blythe, California, and right beside me are ChargePoint DC fast chargers. Um, they charge up to 50 kilowatts, and they have Chatamo and CCS, as well as a few Jake connector level two chargers right in front of me. Um, so this would be a spot where I would probably charge up for a little bit before heading back to Phoenix. We've made it back home. Now I'd like to briefly go over this trip and then we can look at some tips for addressing range anxiety. So on the route to Henderson, Nevada, I stopped at two superchargers with my standard range plus Model 3. This is a very common route people take going from Phoenix to Las Vegas. This path could improve with the addition of more fast chargers. For instance, Kingman, Arizona currently only has Tesla superchargers, but no other DC fast chargers. Electrify America has a location coming soon in the city of Kingman to expand charging. This is great news for non-Teslas wanting to take this route to Las Vegas. The route back had more opportunities to charge with CCS and Chatamo, which is why in the simulation of driving a Polestar 2, I chose this path. On the way back with the simulation of the Polestar 2, my app directed me towards a path with CCS chargers. There are several cities I pass along the way that still need to add fast charging. I was using a better route planner for the return home, so it was helpful at estimating battery percentages. Since I was a little unfamiliar with the route, I did stop at one extra charger in my Polestar 2 simulation before making the last stretch home. There is room for improvement in setting up charging networks, but they are continuing to expand, which is fantastic. Tesla did start a lot sooner with implementing superchargers in 2012, so it makes sense that they have a lot of chargers to support their vehicles. The path from Phoenix, Arizona to Henderson, Nevada was just an example of driving your V out of state. Owners of electric vehicles have traveled much farther and even across the country. In another video, I marked the cost of traveling in a Model 3 when I traveled to Utah. If you're interested, check that out. Now let's talk about range anxiety. There are several EVs currently in the market and upcoming with a range of over 200 miles on a single charge, including some like the different Tesla models, the Chevrolet Bolt, Audi e-tron, Nissan Leaf, and the Ford Mach-E. To help ease some anxiety, here are some tips. The first is planning. I don't mean you have to set aside two hours and use a pencil and map to route your trip. You can easily plan your road trips by using applications that do that work for you. I've talked about two of these apps in my EV101 video. You should check it out if you're new to the EV community. With an app like a better route planner, you can pick a destination and the car you drive. It'll map out your route with which charger to stop at and for how long. These apps are basically like using Google Maps or your car's GPS, except they pinpoint where their charger stations are. Just plan ahead, it will make your trip enjoyable. It's also worth noting that most cars can actually give you charger guidance. I like using this because the car knows all of the technical details about itself and can make pretty accurate estimates for things like arrival state of charge and charging times. Secondly, know your car and how EVs function. Electric vehicles can recuperate some of their consumed energy with regenerative braking and of course use extra energy from driving inefficiently. One pedal driving in EVs is amazing. It keeps your brakes lasting longer and gives some of your battery power back. Not all EVs have this, but once you try it, you'll understand why it's great. Third, have a charging station set up in your home. This way, whenever you leave your car, it will be charged up. Before leaving for this trip, I had my car charge overnight on my off-peak hours. When I got up, the car was ready for its drive. I saved the best for last and most important of all, which is experience. 
What this means is experienced electric vehicle drivers will have less to no range anxiety than those who drive one for the first time. Get to know your car. Having experience driving an EV is critical to increase driving efficiency and learning what to do should a range situation occur. So go take an EV for a test drive. Rent an EV for the weekend. Ask people what their experiences are. Experience living with an EV yourself. One final note, just as any other car, keep the tires maintained. These may seem like, wow, I have to do all of these just to go on a long distance trip. Honestly, this is going to be like second nature once you get the hang of it. It's just an adjustment. On a bigger scope, as EV charging infrastructure expands and as charging networks become more conventional like gas stations, then the term range anxiety will become outdated. For any experienced EV owners, what's some advice you can give to someone who may have range anxiety or who is going on their first electric road trip? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website at kai'sEV.com. That's all for now and happy charging.